Today in our 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, we're going to take a look at and also show you how to install the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with the four pole flat trailer connector. Part number is 118723. Now this is going to deliver 4.2 amps per side for our stop and for our turn signals. And for tail lights, we have 7.5 amps. This should be plenty to power any standard size trailer lights. Now this is what our wiring kit's going to look like when we lay it out. This is our main goal here. This is what we're after to have a working four pole trailer connector at the rear of our vehicle. Now this is going to give us our right turn and brake, our left turn and brake, running lights, and also the ground for our trailer. Now to deliver that signal, it's going to get input from behind the driver's side tail light housing with the yellow and brown wire. And the green and white one, it goes behind the passenger side tail light housing. Those signals come into the converter box here and that converts it into a usable signal for our trailer. Now this box does isolate the trailer wiring from our vehicle wiring. So even if we have shorts or some kind of malfunction in the trailer, we don't have to worry about it harming our vehicle. Also, so we don't overload the lighting signals. We've got a 12 volt power wire that's going to come off that runs directly up to a power source under our hood like the battery. And that feeds the power that the box needs to generate that power going out to the trailer. It's not drawing extra power through the wiring system of the vehicle itself. You'll see there's also a ground wire there. We'll either use an existing stud if there's one available and if not, provided self-tapping screw here is going to do the job for us through the ring terminal that's already connected. Now, you can see we've got our 12 volt power wire here. That's what will run up to the battery. That's gonna connect through a fuse holder. And something I like about Takancha, they've provided heat shrink butt connectors to give us superior moisture resistance and plenty of zip ties here so we can get everything secured along the way. And we've got some double-sided foam tape there to help secure our converter box. Also detailed instructions are gonna help us out with the job, make sure we get it done correctly. Now to begin our installation, we need to remove the two tail light housings. We've got one on each side here. You see there's two torque bit bolts that are holding it in. We've got one here, one here. These are gonna need a T30 torque bit to get it out of there. Pull those out. Then we wanna kind of push with our hand here and kind of wiggle that light and it should come on out of there for us. Once we've got it out, you see we've got our connector right here. So a little red lock. Pull out on that, then we'll press down on that gray part and remove it. Just like that. Set that aside somewhere safe because we don't want it to get scratched. And we'll do the same thing here on the passenger side. Now what we're going to do is use a piece of airline tubing here. We're going to run it down behind this rear fascia so it'll come out at the bottom. I know airline tubing isn't the most common thing to have around your garage, so if you don't have that, a stiff coat hanger would also work. Just clip it, stick it down there. And we should be able to reach up from the, the bottom side here and find that. Now we'll do the same thing for the passenger side as well. What we're going to do is take that yellow, brown, and white wire tape it off to that coat hanger or airline tubing that we brought down from behind that housing. Now we're just going to draw that using our wire right up where we can make that connection with the tail light. Once we have that pulled up here, just peel back that tape, kind of free that up. We'll pull that up far enough so we have both of our plugs readily available. You'll see there's dielectric grease on that already. Put a little dab on the other one. If you don't have dielectric grease, this is part number 11755. This helps prevent any moisture or dirt from getting in there and eventually causing corrosion. We'll slide that together until we hear the click. Push our locking pin back in. I want to place that right back down in where we pulled it out up from. And we'll use this as our new connector at the back of the tail light. Get that slid in. Good pull to make sure it's firmly connected. And we'll slide our light back into position. And we'll re-secure it. The bolts we removed earlier. All right. Now before we tuck our box up in there too far, I'm going to go ahead and make the connection with the bulk wire that runs up front. 
We're going to use our heat shrink butt connector that was provided. We can crimp it on there after we've got it stripped back. We're going to take the end of our provided wire and strip it back as well, and it'll go on the other side. Now to shrink those down, we can use a mini torch, we can use a heat gun, or just a lighter will work out too. So we want to be careful not to overheat them to where they turn colors. We want them to keep their original color. Then when it shrank down fully, you'll see the wire almost look like it gets a little bit bigger. And then a little bit of clear gel is going to come out of the end. Now we're going to find a nice flat area to mount our converter box. That's going to be right around this edge on the back side. Of course, it's going to be tough to see. But what we'll want to do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. We're going to clean off the back of our box and also clean off the surface that we're going to mount it to. We'll give that just a second to evaporate. While we do, we can apply our double-sided foam tape. Put it right on our box. Take the other protective cover off, and we'll slide it right up into position there. So make sure that sticks on really well. We can take care of getting our ground set, which right there will be a great location. It'll be nice, thick material. We we'll use the provided self-tapping screw and you'll need a quarter inch bit driver. Get our hole started first there. We'll place the screw through our ring terminal. Back up into position and we'll secure that down so that we can't wiggle the wire around. Yeah, perfect. Now our four pole wire and our green wire, we're gonna run that over towards the passenger side. This is where some of the zip ties are going to come in handy. Just want to secure it off as we go across. We've got small brackets that come down as bumper supports there. So we can run this right in behind those. That'll keep it up and out of the way. The same with our four pole. And we'll stop our four pole here once we get in the middle that zip tied off there to provide an anchor point. And then we can continue running the green wire on across. Now we'll tape the passenger side off here to our pull wire and get it pulled up and we'll make our connections the same way we did on the driver's side there. Now we'll draw this one on through. Now something I like to do on this side is draw up all of the slack. Make sure you don't have any hanging down anywhere near your exhaust. And then I'm going to zip tie that off right here to make it an anchor point. And we're going to apply a little more dielectric grease to these. And we'll make our connection. Now the factory side of our connector, I'm going to tuck that down and away. And also any extra green wire we have here, we can get that tucked down. All right, and we'll slide our housing into place here. And replace the two Torx bit bolts. Now for our four pole here, we want to decide what kind of length that we're going to need to make our connection. Once we've determined that, whatever excess you have, We'll just tuck that up and secure it off to that wire loom we did the other parts. Now we can use a zip tie to attach our four pole there if we'd like. Or in our case, what we're gonna do is just bring it around the hitch. Bring our dust cap right around there. That'll keep it up, keep it from bouncing around while we head down the highway. Now we're going to run our 12 volt power wire up to the front of the vehicle. The battery is located on the driver's side in that front corner. That's ultimately where we want to end up. I'm going to go right over the top of the hitch here. Just really need to avoid any sharp edges or any significant sources of heat. This will kind of be a, an area you need, just need to go around it, pull a little bit of tension in it, and then anchor your wire out further ahead here.
And you can see this cross member here, that'll give us a really nice secure anchor point. We won't have to worry about any wire trying to hang down back there. You'll see right here are the brake lines. So we'll just work around the fuel tank, try to tag along with those while we head up front. As we work forward here, we're gonna run up above this panel, keep everything nice and safe. We'll just pull off these 10 millimeter plastic nuts. That'll allow us to drop it down just a touch there and get it behind it. Now we'll just re-secure it. And once we're beyond there, we can come up. We're gonna run right up to that front driver's side corner like we talked about. If you still have that coat hanger, you might wanna attach that and try to use that to push it through. Typically though, we'll be able to push what we want up in there and then find it once we get up there to the top. All right, now we'll head up top and find it. Just wanna ensure that we pull out all of the slack so we don't have anything hanging down. Grab our wiring. I'm going to pull that up and out. Again, we want to make sure we get out all of the slack. And then just like before, we want to choose a nice solid anchor point. In this case, there's a wire loom down here underneath the air box we're going to use. That'll just prevent any of the slack from going back under the vehicle. And now we're going to be connecting to this stud. This is our jump start stud, but it's connected directly to the battery there. Let's pull up on this cover. Give you a little bit better look at it. You can see the battery positive terminals, basically this whole section. So just got to cover over it like that. I'm going to pop that up, open it up like that. I'll give you a good look at it. And we're going to keep a short length of extra wire in case we ever need to make any changes with it. We can just trim off our extra there. Also got our fuse holder here. You see, we'll pull that out and strip back each side. Also strip back our wire from the back of the vehicle there. Under the black wire, we're going to add our heat shrink butt connector. We'll add in our fuse holder to the other side of that. And you see we've got the fuse out. We'll add that right after we make the connection to the battery. Get that guy shrink down. Add our ring terminal onto the other side. Now we'll need a 10 millimeter socket. It'll go right on the end of that stud. And typically, once it's broke loose, it'll thread right off there. Place our ring terminal in behind it. And thread that back on. Right. Get that secured down. Check our cover. Won't quite close with it straight back, so we'll turn it down just a little bit. Now we'll place the fuse in the fuse holder. Get that capped off. Now we just want to take remember that little bit of excess we had. Just kind of wrap that up and get that secured off lower here. We want the fuse holder to be visible. That way if there's ever a need to change the fuse or something, that'll be available. And I'll use that hole in the bottom of the fuse holder to kind of bundle the wires on one side. And then we'll secure it to that same wire loom we anchored to. Just pop that closed and we can replace that top cover. All right, we'll get it tested out, make sure it's working as it should. And we're gonna take part number I26 here, it's just a standard four pole tester. We'll slide that in and we'll see that, make sure our lights are working as they should. All right, we'll start by turning on our headlights. Then we can do our left blinker, our right blinker, and our brakes. And with everything working as it should, that's gonna complete our installation of the Deconcha T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector. Part number is 118723. On our 2017 Chrysler Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.